there. I'm Cindy Linden, and this is the Cook Along Podcast. Today we're going to make some soup because it's the time of the year for soup. And this is one of the easiest soups I've ever even heard of. It's uh, incredibly easy to make. I know I say that all the time, but again, that's one of the criteria for the recipes that I fix here on the Cook Along Podcast so that you can cook it with me or so that you don't have to learn any really incredibly tricky techniques in order to do what I'm doing. This is a minestrone recipe, and once upon a time it came from some magazine and was scribbled on a piece of paper because it was before the time when you could just take pictures with your cell phone. So it's been around the family for a while now. It doesn't require any chopping to speak of. It's really just opening cans. What I'm doing in case you hear little cracklings is I'm peeling some garlic. So I'm going to tell you the ingredients and then you can go and compile them if you need to and come back when you have everything. You're going to need some garlic, probably a couple of cloves. You can use more if you want it more garlicky. I'm going to use two cloves today. And then a little splash of olive oil. You're going to need... 28 ounces of diced tomatoes in a can. You're going to need 32 ounces of vegetable broth or chicken broth. And fortunately, a standard aseptic container of vegetable or chicken broth is 32 ounces. So that's pretty handy. You want a 15 ounce can of some kind of beans. I like cannellini beans in this. You could also use garbanzo beans slash chickpeas. And then a 15-ounce can of kidney beans. And you can leave that out if it seems like too many beans. You need somewhere between 9 and 16 ounces of frozen green beans. Or, because this recipe is really flexible, you could use frozen broccoli or you could use carrots or you could use a little of all of the above. The point is you want somewhere between probably 10 ounces and 16 ounces of those frozen vegetables. You need a half teaspoon of salt, a quarter of a teaspoon of pepper, a five ounce bag of fresh spinach or a 10 ounce bag of frozen spinach. And if you're going to do that, you have to defrost it first. I suppose you could use Swiss chard or something in here too. It's a very flexible recipe. So what have you got in your house? Let's use it. You need a half cup of grated Parmesan. The only do ahead I would suggest is that you open your cans of beans that you're going to use, whatever kind it is, and get them in a colander and rinse them and drain them. There's nothing wrong with the juice around the beans. The thing is that most beans are packed with salt. And if you use the full broth from the can, you suddenly lose control of how much salt you're putting into the recipe because who knows how much is in those cans. So I recommend that you rinse them and drain them. Before we begin, get them into a colander because they're all going to go in at the same time. You can rinse them all together. In terms of equipment, you're going to need a large pot to hold all the stuff I just read to you and a spoon to stir with and a can opener. I think that's it. It's pretty straightforward, fast to get on the table. You can get it on the table in about 20 minutes. In fact, because this is so quick and easy, you might consider it for a couple of special occasion kind of uses, like, say, Christmas Eve dinner, or a time when you're having company, and maybe you just really would prefer to sit and chat with them over being in the kitchen. This is a simply impressive meal. That's not quite the right words. It's comfort food. There it is. It's that it's comfort food. It's Italian comfort food, so you're getting all those kind of warm Italian notes that are reassuring and yummy in a soup that is warm and very easy to eat, and it looks beautiful, and you can serve it with some garlic bread, which is easy, or a quick-tossed salad, just lettuce and tomatoes and carrots or something. It's a very simple meal, but it really looks nice on the table, and everybody is really pleased to eat it because it's comfort food. Once you got your big pot out, your soup pot, that's what I like to think of it as. It's a soup pot. I don't know what size it is. You know what? Let me see if it says on the bottom. It doesn't. Never mind. It doesn't. It's got the patent and the name and where it was made and blah, 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 but nothing about the size. It's a soup pot. Splash a little olive oil. Just like, I don't know, two tablespoons, 
but you don't have to measure it either. Just trust yourself and splash a little bit in there. And then we're going to turn it on to medium heat. And I am going to get out my garlic press. I have two peeled cloves of garlic here. And I am going to squish those right into the olive oil in the pot. Oh, these were tough. Wow, those were harder than usual. All right, and then... We're just going to let that sort of come to temperature. What we want to do is sort of release the flavors and the oils and aromas and all that from the garlic before we move on. So that's going to take just a minute. This is where you need your spoon and your pan should be heating on medium. This is a fabulous fast dinner and I love that it has a little cheese in it and I love that it's completely flexible in terms of what kind of vegetables you put in it. The ones I gave you are my favorite ones for this recipe. I have some garlic that I put in my pot that just squished but didn't mince. So I think I'm gonna take that out and cut them up before they get to cook in here. That's annoying. I'm not supposed to do that. I have a really nice garlic press that I use instead of mincing because I read that that's what America's Test Kitchen does and if it's good enough for them, it certainly is good enough for me. But this time, for whatever reason, it didn't get all the stuff squished up. The garlic is now starting to sizzle just a little bit, which is a good thing. It means it's going to start to release its flavors. Now, we don't want to brown this, and we certainly don't want to burn this. So, as it's starting to simmer, you want your diced tomatoes open. Now, I have pull tops on mine, so I don't have to use a can opener. If you don't have pull tops, you may want to lower the heat a little bit on your garlic so you have time to use your can opener, because this is pretty fast pull these pull tops off and then just dump them in which I'm not going to do quite yet but it is starting to smell really good I'm going to wait until they just start to turn golden a friend of mine used to call that scorched garlic and meant that is a good thing it sounds like a bad thing but it wasn't it's a good thing I don't want to go that far there's a point when the sugars in the garlic start to turn brown a little bit and then the pieces are getting sticky and sort of start to stick to each other which is what's happening right now. And then beyond that, it'll turn sort of nut color and it'll be a different flavor. I am, as you probably just heard, putting my tomatoes in. That was my first 15 ounce can because I didn't have a 28 ounce can. I think they're 14 and a half ounces. And I'm just using two of those. Here goes the other one. I probably could have done this as a quick bite because it's so simple, but there were enough ingredients that I decided I should just cook it with you just in case. All right, so now that's all cooking over medium heat and we want to bring it to a simmer a little bit. So I'm just gonna leave that for a moment while I rinse out these cans. I hope you recycle wherever you are so that stuff doesn't go into the landfill quite as much. I'm recycling my Four cans and an aseptic carton. I don't know whether to feel virtuous about the fact that I recycle them or guilty about the fact that I even have them. It's hard to know. I'm stirring these tomatoes a little bit. Once they start to cook, you know what, I'm going to turn this up just a hair to medium high. Just because I don't feel like waiting and I don't think it's going to hurt it. Here's what I'm going to do. I am going to go away. And I'm going to tell you first what you're going to do. You're going to bring this to a simmer, your big pot here, full of tomatoes and garlic. So it's just bubbling a little bit. And then turn it down so that it'll continue simmering and let it simmer for about two minutes. And when you're about two minutes in, come back and hear what we're going to do next. All right, the two minutes are up. This is boiling a little more furiously than I really want it to be. Now we're gonna add that full carton of broth you got. And it doesn't matter whether you use the chicken or the vegetable, the chicken might have a little more umami flavor to it. You know what I mean? But it also means it's no longer a vegetarian dish. So that whole carton is going in the pan. 
And then we're going to stir in the beans that you've rinsed and drained. I am using some red kidney beans and some cannellini beans, which are white kidney beans. And then we need to stir that up. Once I figure out what I did with my spoon, did it fall in the pot? No. There it is. Ah, I tend to throw utensils. When I'm washing dishes, like I scrub something and then I throw down the brush and <laughs> I have to pick it up for the next dish and it's just a weird pattern I get into and I think I just did the same thing with my spoon here. I was not using it. It was in my hand and I needed my hand and so I just kind of tossed it. Anyway, I found it. All right, now we're going to let it simmer again. So once you've added the beans, it needs to come to a simmer. And because it was already pretty hot, this shouldn't take very long. So we're going to just leave that to be for a minute while we get out the frozen green beans and the fresh spinach. I had an interesting time trying to get spinach today. I use the grocery store pickup thing, and I have ever since the pandemic, because I found that I was gaining two hours every week by being able to shop just sort of one item at a time when it occurred to me online from home rather than going through the store for two hours. So I still use the pickup. I really like it. In case this is new to you, you do your shopping on the company website, pay online as well, and then you pick your day you want to pick it up at the grocery store and you drive up into a special designated space let them know you're there and they bring your groceries out to you. And bingo, you're in and out of the grocery parking lot, sometimes in under five minutes, certainly under 10. And uh, that for me was a revelation. Anyhow, the point I was going to make was when I was shopping, the spinach kept going away. I'd put a certain kind of spinach in my shopping cart and go back to it a little later and it would then tell me it was out of stock and that happened to me at least three times it kept saying yeah now it's out of stock you know we've had some pandemic issues with that kind of thing but to have them disappear one by one each time I put a new kind into my shopping cart to have it go away by the time I looked at it again makes me wonder what the rush on spinach was all about or if they were short because of some health warning that I haven't read about. I hope that's not true because I'm about to eat it. I'm going to turn this broth a little bit back up to medium. I forgot to mention that, but I turned it down when it was bubbling so hard before I added the broth. So I just turned it back up to about medium high because I want it to simmer. I don't know why I feel impatient about this when it's so fast anyway, but I do. What we could do while we're still waiting is get the Parmesan cheese out and ready to go. Hopefully you've got some in your refrigerator that you've freshly grated yourself and that isn't from a round cardboard can. you got Italian food. You need a little Parmesan in it. You just do. Mine is just beginning to simmer. So I think it was the right thing to do to turn it up a little bit. That was my oven, which is preheated for the garlic bread. This is a new recipe I'm doing for garlic bread I got from America's Test Kitchen. We'll see how it turns out. And if it's really good, I'll do a quick bite of it so you guys can have the recipe too. It's using real garlic, you know, as opposed to garlic salt or garlic powder. It's using real garlic. So I'm pretty excited about it. I haven't had any really good garlic bread in a long time. Give your soup a sort of a stir as it starts to simmer just to make sure everything's moving around. That'll slow it down, but that's okay. It's not going to kill us. And while it's starting to come to a simmer, I'm going to throw in these green beans. And again, whatever veggies you've got, frozen veggies, just put them in. Just dump them in. Oh, you know what? I probably should have cut them into smaller bites because these are really long. Well... They'll look pretty. It'll just be a little tricky to eat. <laughs> oh, well. Okay, <laughs> sarah, sarah, you know. Okay, the green beans are in whatever vegetables. Your broccoli, your carrots. Not the fresh spinach yet, though. Just the frozen stuff. And we're going to simmer it about three minutes. And those frozen vegetables are going to slow it down just a little bit. But maybe not a lot. 
I really wish I had chopped those. They're so long. Oh my gosh. I wonder if I can chop them. Oh, I have an idea. Kitchen shears. I'm going to use kitchen shears. There's my kitchen shears. And chop them in the pan because they're all floating at the top. I'm just going to snip them. How funny. This is a brilliant move. Uh, you heard it here first. You can, If you forget to chop your green beans, you can do it with kitchen shears after you put them in the pot. And it's actually really fast and easy because now they're not frozen. This might have been even better than if I'd remember to cut them in the first place. Oh, my goodness. Sometimes I impress myself. There, those are all manageable. You can just keep chopping until they're the right size. <laughs> you could probably do this with the broccoli and the carrots, too. Oh, no, not the carrots. Never mind. Oh, I feel so brilliant. All right. Now I'm going to go away and let this simmer for three minutes and then come back. All right, now, it's been three minutes. We're going to put in half a teaspoon of salt. We're going to put in a quarter of a teaspoon of ground pepper. I take them right out of my canisters on top of the stove because it's easier than reaching into my spice cabinet. I just unscrew the lids. I don't want to work any harder than I have to. And then we're going to put in five ounces of fresh spinach. Now I have a 10 ounce bag, so I'm just going to guess at what half is. If you have a five ounce bag, that's great. If you have a 10 ounce bag of frozen spinach, that's probably even easier. It all goes in now, but your frozen spinach, hopefully, sorry about all the bag noise there, was defrosted first. You just stir that spinach in until it wilts. You know, it's going to shrink and wilt and become not just the main thing on top of your soup here, but little bits inside your soup. And when that happens, your soup is ready to serve. Isn't that wacky? I should have set a timer. I should have timed it to see how long it actually took to do that. The last, very last step, once the spinach is wilted, which I'm still stirring it here, I want a little more wilty than this before I do the last step, is to take your half a cup of grated Parmesan or shredded Parmesan and sprinkle it on top. Those shreds, they may sink to the bottom eventually, and they may eventually stick to the bottom of your pan, which now that I think about it, I have a good little blog on the cookalongpodcast.com website about how to get really difficult stuff off of the bottom of your favorite pan. And I don't remember what it's called. Yes, I do, actually. I think it's called How Do I Get That Stuff Off the Bottom of My Favorite Pan. <laughs> it's very similar to that. It's in the blog section if you wanted to visit the website. It is not a podcast, so you won't find it if you're scrolling through the podcast feed. All right, the spinach is done. I'm turning off the heat. And I'm now going to sprinkle it with Parmesan. And then I am going to go eat it. I suggest that you serve it at the table with more Parmesan so that people can sprinkle it on top of their individual bowls of soup. And that you serve it with some kind of crusty bread and or a fresh, crisp green salad. Okay? Share this recipe with your friends. Send them to the Cook Along podcast so that they can listen along with you and cook along with me. And until next time, happy cooking!